This is Vigor. We're on the Nintendo Switch. We're doing tips and tricks to help you learn the game and also maybe provide a little bit of a tactical edge with the more advanced options in the game. So first off, when you are moving around your character, you can see here you can move the right stick to actually look around without having to actually move your character's positioning in case you are, say, hiding somewhere, as in a tree. So in the game, you can actually crouch by clicking the A button, and you can hold A in order to go prone. And with that, you can tap in the left stick to go all the way up. And you can also press the B button to go all the way up too. So with that, you can actually hide inside of objects uh, such as trees and bushes, and you will be almost completely uh, invisible just in regards to the outside. So I'm trying to give context to that. Notice how you can't really see my character at all from the outside of the tree. It's very helpful, especially when things kind of blur together within this game. Now, with the shooting, it's very, very awkward in this. There's a lot of recoil. Your gun's going to go up a lot, so you got to be careful of that. And you mix that in with the Joy-Con controls, it's a little bit awkward. So I do want to quickly note that you can press the, the plus sign, and you can go to controls, and you can really tweak this to be however you want in terms of sensitivity. And if you go to the bottom, it's also got the motion controls, if that's something that you are more comfortable with when it comes to aiming. So it's really a good idea to kind of get in there, tweak those settings, and really adjust them to be what you want them to be. So the next thing is, I guess you could call this the D-pad, but the, the up kind of triangle, I guess you could say. We'll just say up on the D-pad. That brings up your map. So this is a map of the particular encounter that we're on. So this is the main game mode within the game. I do suggest playing the uh, kind of deathmatch, the quick shooting game mode in order to kind of learn the various weapons and tools of the game. It's because it, every round you get a new weapon, so it's something you get to master and sort of get a handle on. So with this map, we get to see a lot of things. So the orange points are where we can exit. At any point in the game, because the goal is to collect resources in order to build up your house, you can leave. Now when you are leaving, there is like a 10, cent, 10 second countdown. So you actually have to be kind of careful and protect yourself and watch out for people coming to attack you. But you can leave at any point. Now from there, we've got other neat things. So on the map, we've got barred houses. Maybe you'll find a safe in there. We've got a uh, kind of comm station. So what's interesting is the comm station will allow you to change the landing zone of the airdrop. So towards the end of the game, you'll see that there's an airdrop area. An airdrop will come down and the players will compete against. If you pick the airdrop up, everyone on the map knows where you are at all times, and you have to escape using the airdrop. Will there be other players? Maybe, maybe not. So then there's also these things called radio signals. So that's kind of really interesting too. Again, these are like the, the comm kind of centers. So there's like a signals detector, and that kind of gives you a brief look at where other outlanders, aka other players, are. So on every map, they give you kind of a little bit of an objective with these undiscovered locations. These are just like highlighted spots on the map that you can actually discover. It doesn't do anything, but it kind of just fills up the map, and I guess you learn the places. On Xbox, there was an achievement for it. So, you know, whatever. So in the game, you just kind of loot. You can also alternatively press X to take all. That's very, very helpful in regards to quick looting, or you can individually take stuff if you only want certain things. But take all is very helpful. So uh, right on the D-pad is kind of your emote. You can hold that down, and you can get a whole menu option of ways to talk with your teammates. Uh, if you click on left on the D-pad, that will create a ping on the map. So you can actually see that on our map that there, well, you, you'd see it usually. There, there's a ping. You can see the ping on the map. So that's another helpful way to kind of let your teammates know if you're not talking to them, uh, you know, where they're supposed to be going. I, I think that's a, a very, very helpful thing to kind of know. So also in the game, many of the buildings you go through, you can actually sort of uh, climb through things. So you can climb through windows. If you're on a second story, you can climb through a window. Just note that it'll take damage. If you're below somewhere, you can actually, again, use your jump to climb onto things. Just in case you were curious about the, the movement system, I'm sorry, these Joy-Cons are just awful for movement. <laughs> just the, the worst, and uh, I have some like controller drift stick on this too. Anyways, oh, there's a guy right there. So that was kind of really stupid of them. I don't know why they didn't finish me off, so we get to take all of their resources. That's cool. So with that, we did take a little bit of damage, so we want to get to, I guess you could say, a slightly safe area. We'll, we'll crouch down here for now because, well, it's not safe. So if you hold uh, L, 
you actually get a quick option. And assuming you have to equip this stuff, you have to pick it in your loadout before you jump in here. And then you have something like this, and then you can hold CR, and you will heal yourself, noticing in the bottom right that my health is now full, and I am healed. It works the same with weapons. So you hold R, and then you can select from the weapons you have. So say I want to pull out this Thompson that I collected off that guy's body. I will obviously need to reload it, but now I have that available. And that helps quite a bit in regards to being able to select your weapons. I really do suggest only bringing uh, one weapon in at a time because uh, you don't want to lose that weapon, as to say. Or you don't want to lose more weapons than you need to. So only bring stuff into matches that you are prepared to actually lose when you are playing just that you are aware because it is a permadeath system unless you pay into their uh buying system sorry the right <laughs> joy con just disconnected so that is fantastic uh there is clicking in the right stick for a melee hit if you'd like to do that sort of thing within the game i find that the melee detection and stuff really isn't great so you're obviously in my opinion better off uh, actually getting that reload in instead of you know uh, trying to melee or even use a knife I find that the knife detection is really not that stellar on here in my opinion let's grab that so you can see now I've actually collected a lot of resources so you click the minus symbol and that will pull up your loadout and all the things that you have collected so this is pretty good I'm happy with what I've got so I'm actually going to leave the match at this point because I've got all the resources that I feel I need. You can stay as long as you want. You can actually engage and eliminate all of their opponents, fight for that airdrop, or not. It's completely up to you if you want to do that. I should also mention clicking the left stick is kind of sprinting, and you know, they go over some of this stuff when you're playing in the tutorial of the game if you choose to do that. You can skip the tutorial too. That's uh, totally a legit option. In regards to actually playing this, it's kind of neat in that regard, what you can do there. But I, I hope this kind of went over the movement. Come on, these sticks are so... Uh, come on, jeez. I don't know if I'll have to send these in or something, but... The plane is incoming. Yeah. Okay, the cool. So we can kind of talk about this quickly, because we're seeing the plane drop over, and it kind of reinforces the, the concept that I was going over. So you can see on the map here that we've got this location it will show up uh, briefly and then you'll be able to see a player actually kind of maybe go after it there are little bonuses you can kind of do on the map too, little interactive things that can actually change like buffs or even negatives to people that are using the airdrop so that's kind of a cool thing you really got to keep an eye out for uh, various stuff and if you're kind of smart you can actually see the airdrop over there coming down and then becoming available for players. But I'm going to let other people kind of fight over it. I mean, there might not actually be anyone left in the match, and I could be making a big mistake by not going for it, but I'd rather keep my loot because I want to improve my house and uh, enhance it further. So you're seeing you can now, on the map, clearly see the airdrop. So we're going to kind of come over here, and we're just going to give it a few seconds because I want to see if it'll actually show the indicator so that I can show you somebody actually running away with it as it does show on the map. Oh, you can also move in the right stick if you want to zoom in and kind of see all the details a little bit uh, more intense with the focus option too, if you want to focus quickly to where you are by pressing Y. It's, it's, it's very helpful. And it doesn't look like anybody's really picking it up, which kind of makes me wonder, should I go back and get it? Now, with the airdrop dropping, there's going to be gas coming into the map. So you got to be careful of that. But we're just going to leave it at this point so we can show off a little bit more uh, afterwards. And you can see right here, we're now getting the area leave. So we should be a little bit smart. We should kind of position ourselves where we can sort of deal with any threats that come. And then we leave the match. So while we're in the kind of base, because I wanted to show off a little bit more of the shooting, uh, this is where you collect your wood. If you had your food garden, you'd collect it over there. And I do want to point out that this food area actually is a good resource in order to get stuff. So you come up here, and then if you have any food that you've collected, you can actually donate it. And there's different food tiers for unlocks and rewards. That's kind of an extra little layering to the game. And be sure 
to after you finish matches before you jump into a new match uh, adjust your loadout because everything that you just collected weapon wise will be available in your loadout and if you jump into a new match and you take all this stuff in with you you could lose it so only take the essentials when you are jumping to the match and that includes your consumables be smart about it and it's going to make a big deal if you do want to practice your weaponry and your testing there's a, a firing range here though it is a bit more challenge based at this current point great so i thought a straight up combative kind of match would be a good way to show off the gunplay a bit so you can tap in the r button in order to switch aiming perspectives if that's your sort of thing you can do that while aimed in so also while aimed in which is zl you can tap in the right stick and actually go to aim down sights. So you can actually aim down the iron sights of the gun. So again, the elimination mode, well, the deathmatch, is really good for actually learning the various weapons within the game and kind of getting an idea of the terrain and the map style of what this experience provides as you move around with it. And it just kind of gets you more familiar with guns and how other outlanders kind of use the environment uh, to their advantage. So yeah, I find a lot of the shooting in this game really is sort of luck-based, as you don't necessarily know if you're actually hitting people. You're just kind of getting, like, the indicators and stuff and then seeing them die. It's actually quite intense, and if you aim down after having aimed down, you will go right back into your aim down sights kind of scope. And we'll show that off right here in a sec once the curtain kind of goes down. So you're seeing how we're aimed in right now. Now we just click the stick we're automatically aimed in, whereas we can click in... The, the right stick again and now we're aimed out when we're in this version I do find that this is easier for shooting on some guns whereas aiming down the sights all the way with the right stick is sometimes easier so again right stick we're aimed down the sights we use the LZ and we can aim right down the sight again without having to switch back into it so that is very helpful uh, if you want to switch between the two but yeah I find a lot of the gun plays are very lucky in this one just in regards to getting those shot shots off because you can be killed so quickly so fast and you won't even know what's happening and you don't really get a chance to like fight back has to say so you gotta be fast you gotta get the draw on people and uh or get really lucky and that's kind of the gist of what 